Grateful you could stay on Iron Pios, could you back straight up to our very first story. Government has extended the expiration date for the domestic debt exchange program to 30th December 2022 to allow for key concerns raised by stakeholders be accommodated in some form. According to Finance Minister Ken Uforiata, confidence and active participation of all stakeholders are the essential element for the success of this debt exchange program. Given an update on the economy today, Ken Uforiata stated that government is committed to laying out a pathway towards attaining debt sustainability informed by sound technical analysis and broad stakeholder engagement. American structural reforms, the IMF and government signed off a staff level agreement on 13 December 2022 for a US $3 billion extended credit facility. So far, we have all witnessed against of the CD over the past week, as well as the attainment of the staff level agreement in near record time. These are results of our collective efforts. As 1st Samuel 3019 says, nothing was missing, great or small. We must and we will collectively recover all. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to recover all, we still have a lot of work to do before the end of year in order to gain the full benefit of the debt exchange program. Following the stakeholder engagement, government has agreed to extend the expiration date for the domestic debt exchange to 30 of December 2022 to allow for key concerns raised by stakeholders to be accommodated in some form. The launch of the debt exchange program, coupled with the sign of the staff level agreement of the IMF, have aided our stability efforts and have in particular contributed significantly to the rebound of our currency. While accommodating the inputs of stakeholders, we must do all we can to sustain the gains of these initiatives, keeping in sight the urgency of, the, of obtaining IMF board approval in quarter one, 2023. The cost of this not succeeding will be too huge for our economy. Well, he also urged Parliament to pass the appropriations bill for the 2023 fiscal year. And to support us in getting the appropriations bill for the 2023 fiscal year passed. We also urge Parliament to support in particular new revenue measures outlined in the 2023 budget, which aim to improve revenue mobilization. We cannot afford to repeat the mistakes of 2022. Our end game as a government has always been to achieve a Ghana Beyond Aid, a wealthy, inclusive, sustainable, empowered, and resilient society, a wiser Ghana. The necessary precondition for this is a stable macroeconomic environment. Viewed within that lens, restructuring our debt is only but a necessary part of our story. The ensuing years will focus on building an entrepreneurial and export-driven economy as we grow the economy to protect and create jobs, tackle inflation, and strengthen our currency. Importation of food should soon be a thing of the past. We cannot afford to lose this essence of forward momentum for our economy as we navigate towards stability, predictability, and growth. 2023 must be our comeback year, a year in which we put in place stronger foundations that will allow us to change our country for the better and in a way that is enduring, inclusive, and transformational. We all have a role to play, and I urge us all to work together with the government and support the various interventions being implemented to kickstart our recovery in a determined, bold, and courageous way. Above all, I urge us all to maintain an unshakable sense of optimism about Ghana. In the Finance Minister Kenu Furiata there, a while longer on the economy and a financial analyst has described as a rushed decision the government's announcement of a suspension of all debt service payments. Well, the government announced suspension of all debt service payments and that certain categories of external debt pending an orderly restructuring of the affected obligations. Now, the suspension will include the payments of euro bonds, commercial term loans, and on most bilateral debt. It will, however, not include the payment of multilateral debt. 
new debts or whether multilateral or otherwise contracted after 19th December 2022 or debts related to certain short-term trade facilities. But speaking earlier on the marketplace, financial analyst Dr. Rich Tuyahini said the government should have waited for the implementation of the debt exchange program after extending the deadline for institutional bondholders to sign up to the facility to 30th December. The institutions that have credit lines, some institutions have credit lines, because of credit lines. Immediately we say it, that they will be cut off. They will be cut off. And if they are cut off, it would affect the external trade. So it's a quite, a quite, the implication is quite big. But I would have thought that we would have tried to complete the debt exchange, the domestic debt exchange. And be, before we go and do the, the pre, pre default, so that we could negotiate with them very well for the haircut or whatever they were talking about. We don't have a tab. There's no two ways about that. And the literature support that you're not going to have it because you're telling them that I cannot, or I don't have. Therefore, wait and let me tell you what you can do. If you're hard pressed for time, you set your time frame, and you should make provision for, especially the domestic. You see. The domestic debt restructuring would have helped in the external restructuring. But now that you're having a problem to do it, people are now beginning to say, oh, yeah, there is no confidence. I would have thought that we have a lot of time. We had time from July up to today. The engagement, as I've always been saying, there needs to be a good stakeholder's engagement to tell people the reason why we are doing it and the benefit for us. Not only the benefit for physical space, what we do to industry, what we do to the private sector. If all these things we knew from July, we could have programmed ourselves very well that we shouldn't have been hard pressed by time. Now we haven't done that. We are getting hard pressed every day, every day. So we are taking some measures that for me, in your negotiation, is not going to be easy.